What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when running a number of benchmarking tests on the brand new 2023 15-inch M2 powered MacBook Air. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, Let's hit the titles. So before we start, I do want to mention that the full spec for the model that I'm using will be left down below in this video's description. The first few benchmarking applications which I threw at this MacBook Air were from Geekbench, the first of these being Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench runs several different tests on this machine and once these tests have been completed, it will then score the machine based on the time taken to complete these tasks. So on the single core side of things, I got a score of 6,654 and on the multi-core I got a score of 27,724. I then ran the Geekbench 4 compute test and got an OpenCL score of 111,968 and when running the metal compute test I got a score of 97,496. I then ran Geekbench 5 starting with the CPU test I got a single core score of 1,452 and a multi-core score of 6,960. And once again, when running the compute test through Geekbench 5, I got an open CL score of 25,371. And when running this test through Metal, I got a score of 28,127. Running the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6, and starting off with their CPU test, I got a single core score of 2598 and a multi core score of 10058. And when running the compute test through Geekbench 6, I got an OpenCL score of 27738 and I got a metal score of 45752. Sticking with the trend of testing the CPU, I then ran Cinebench R23 and when running this test I got a single core score of 1597 and I also got a multi-core score of 7852 which gives us a ratio of 4.92. The next application which I ran on this MacBook Air was from Novabench. Now Novabench runs several different tests on all aspects of the machine from the memory, storage, CPU and also GPU. So for this test, I got a score of 1,899. I then tested the storage speeds on this MacBook Air, and whilst I was hopeful to see improvements compared to the 13-inch MacBook Air, in fact, we never saw them. With this MacBook Air coming in with read speeds of 1,468 and write speeds of 2,389. I then wanted to see how well this machine would perform graphically, so I ran GFX Bench Metal. Now I will be calculating the average for the higher and lower intensive tasks, whilst I will also be showing you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 192.86 frames per second, whereas for those lower level intensive tasks, I got an average frame rate of 238.89 frames per second. So sticking to testing the GPU portion of the M2, I ran several tests from 3DMark, starting off with the wildlife test, which was useless as I had maxed this test out with it clocking 60 frames per second. So when running the wildlife stress test, I got both a higher and a lower score of 10,200, which is great as it shows that even with this fanless design, that when doing light editing tasks or light gaming tasks, that this machine will not throttle. I then ran the Wildlife Extreme test and got a score of 6,804 and an FPS of 40.7 frames per second, which is quite impressive considering the 13 inch M2 powered MacBook Pro came in with a score of 6,848 and it also came in with 41 frames per second. And whilst running the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, the best score achieved was 6,811, whilst the lowest was 5,174, which indeed means there was a decrease in performance of around 27%. 
Sticking to testing the GPU or graphics, I then chose to run Valley and Heaven from Unigen benchmarking tools. And whilst running Heaven, I got an average frame rate of 90.5 frames per second with a score of 2280. And whilst running the Valley test, I got a score of 3427 and an average frame rate of 81.9 frames per second. I then ran the Shadow of a Tomb Raider benchmark at 2560 by 1600 which rendered out 2768 frames with an average frame rate of 17 fps. And when I lowered to the resolution of 1920 by 1200, it managed to render 4056 frames with an average frame rate of 26 FPS. I then ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 5417. When running Blender on this MacBook Air to render the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 14 minutes and 58 seconds to complete. But whilst using the GPU, it took 5 minutes and 20 seconds to complete this. And whilst rendering the BMW scene, it took 6 minutes and 22 seconds to complete the render using the CPU. And when using the GPU, it took 1 minute and 57 seconds to complete. I then ran a timed Final Cut Pro export, which exported a 5 minute 24 second video file to H.264. And the time taken to export this at 1920 by 1080 was 48 seconds. And when exporting as a 4K video project, it took two minutes and 55 seconds to complete, which is pretty much identical to the 47 seconds and two minutes and 56 seconds it took to complete on the entry M2 13 inch MacBook Pro. I then ran a network speed test and got a download speed of 606 megabits per second and an upload speed of 101 megabits per second. I then ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and got a score of 73,193 and when running the speedometer 2.0 HTML test I got a score of 436. So that'll be all for today's video. Of course, I will be uploading a number of different videos over the coming days and weeks, comparing this MacBook Air to other MacBooks and to other desktop machines. So if you are new around here and want to be one of the first 5,000 people to do so, then be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when any of my new videos go live. If you've got any questions or if there is anything that you would like to see further tested, then be sure to leave your suggestions down below in the comment section or alternatively you can hit me up on my social media links to which can be found down below in this video's description once again thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time take care and have a good one